Because uh, <laughs> my, my dad I'm did. I'm, I'm not. A, <laughs> I mean, for me, I'm not really big on 3D, man. Nah, like, bro. So, so, so let me let me say this bro real quick. Random story. So my dad, uh -huh. he, he went out and like bought a 3D TV, right? And so this man gets a 3D TV and it comes with two glasses. So it's a, like my family's pretty big. I have uh, three sisters, me, my mom, and my dad, right? So how the fuck are we all going to just wear two glasses? And so, like... Only does 3D? What the hell? Yeah, and so it comes... Y'all got to share them. <laughs> no, no, so... With the so glasses, y'all get, get eye patch glasses. So you can just say with 3D, but, like, so when it comes out of the box, it comes with 3D on, and it doesn't specify that. And so you turn that shit on, and it just, like, straight up just hits you with, like, blurry-ass vision fucks you up. Like I'm, I'm talking about migraines and headaches, man. Like, I, oh yeah, I can, yeah. I, I feel like I can credit the moment I turned this TV on to like my migraines nowadays. You know, like it was that fucked up 3D. Uh huh. Like, cause no one knew what the fuck they were doing with 3D. Like, unless you actually got a camera to record like in 3D, like your 3D image wasn't gonna be that great. Like, you can just play 3D recordings on TV and be like. This is 3D. Put on the glasses, and it'll work. It, it's just like it literally just looks like a dark, crappy version of the movie you're watching, or it did at the time. I don't like nowadays. I tried not to go to 3D movies because uh -huh. I feel like it's a gimmick. Yeah. Uh huh. Or at least that's how I feel nowadays. Like I know that there's um, there's like you know there's actual movies that where the 3D is praised, like Avatar. Um, I think. Uh, Harry Kumar, Harry Kumar Christmas, fucking uh, Shark Boy and Lava Girl. No, 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 no. We don't talk uh, about that. We're talking about that shit. Man. <laughs> Avatar was the best. Avatar was the best. Was, the best. Nothing else. was it Spy Kids 3D? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think that uh, the one I heard was good was uh, How to Train Your Dragon on 3D. Uh -huh. And and yeah, it's like for me, it's just you know I'm really big on like um on color on, and it's I don't really like. Tinting, you know, tinting my vision just, you know, just for some, just, just, just for, for something that might be three D. But the thing is, some filmmakers don't even care about that. Like they didn't even think about like, oh, like should I set up a shot just so they can be three D? Like some of them don't even want to do that. But oh, so like the thing about three D is like some of them are done like in pro uh post production, uh huh, without the equipment for it to be three D. Right. So it like it's not actual 3D. It's just like rendered as if it should be. But it's like unless you really put a lot of time into it, it won't be like the effects will suck. Um. But anyways, getting back to VR. Um. Hold on. Wait. 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 One second. Yeah. Did you guys see Avatar at the theater? Yeah. No, I never got to see it at the theater. Oh man, that in 3D, nothing else touches. That was I saw the IMAX 3D. That was an experience. It was oh. and and. Like, I mean, going back and like watching the movie nowadays, I, I don't think it's that great of a movie, but I just think the effects yeah. that they used and like the amount of, um, like, I think they, that they recorded it with an IMAX camera and it was like one of the first to do so. IMAX 3D camera. Yeah, and it was like, it was one of the first movies to do so, right? Uh, okay. And it was it like. Probably, yeah, this camera's always like that. I, I think. I think he knew. That like what the cameras could do, you know? Yeah. Because it's just Definitely. like I, I feel like you need to do your research and see where your cameras are, like where the limitations and what the best settings and lighting, you know, like it's a lot of it's a lot of shit, man. You gotta give it to the guy. Uh yeah, and I mean it's he's a he's a really good filmmaker who just keeps pushing his boundaries and at least technical boundaries. Um but this kind of like reminds me of um. So I was so I was in the cinematography class last semester. Uh, one of the professors really wanted to push her um, what was this? Her three her three sixty uh, camera, and she did this little video and it was cool. But my question was like, I mean, is three sixty really? You think you think three sixty even has a place in like film? Um, because she was really like she was really pushing and she was like so invested in it she was like like yeah like there's something in here and i'm 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 like a forerunner like from like for this technology and there's something in here we can possibly innovate and you know and actually uh that would probably progress film in some some certain aspect or or shape or form 
I'm a, I'm but, a straight up to say no. I mean, yeah, and the thing is, like, for me, it was just like it's cool, but after some point, like. I mean, you give right. the audience some like options to look at, and I mean, yeah, they get, they can look at anything, but no. It's... So, I, I'm just gonna shoot this down real quick, and then I want to get back to VR finish that real quick. But um, so I want to shoot this down by saying fuck that, <laughs> because it's like the amount of work you have to do to make it work. Because it's like if you're gonna do a 360 shot, you gotta line up everything around you. Because people are gonna be looking at it at all times, right? Like you don't know what they can look at. I, I think that this technology is good for entertainment wise, as in like, oh, I'm gonna do something creative, like you know those art, like um, what's called those angle arts, where you know they, they do the shadows with angles. Uh, I, I'm probably butchering what it's called, but like I think that something like that where you could use it to express yourself artistically but in a cinema in a movie i don't know man i think you could do a shot but you can't do a full movie like that um i she yeah. she used it like in the in the documentary kind of form so i think it it was only five minutes but i was like after that i was like i, I can't do more of that like it's kind of it's a lot you know it's a lot to um I don't know, man. Take in, yeah, to me, it only works for, like, action stuff. Like, I have a lot of motorcycle riders who are, like, they'll use that, or, like, MotoGP riders, or even, like, a Formula One riders who have a 360 camera. It's really good for action stuff, or to show off, like, a maybe, like, around a big canyon or something like that. But for, like, a movie, it's too much to to show it in so little time, right? Like, you, you're better off, in a big budget movie, you're better off just having, like, one of those rigs that they have where, like, you can just quickly turn the camera around and pan over. Um, you better off having something like that rather than a 360 camera. It's, it's pretty useless. Well, I, I think that a 360 camera would also be, like, a waste of time in editing. Because it's, like, maybe you could use it for, um, to capture some of the action, right? And you could use it, like, like I said, you could probably use it in bursts and moments. But, like, I don't think you could do a full movie that way. And I don't think that you want to invest that much money into that when you can just do like a different angle or a different camera and like you know we got movies that have been done one shots that are like 1917 fucking amazing well because you're really throwing out storytelling out the window like like a story's not being told anymore from like a certain person it's being told by the person who like who interprets it or decides where to look and, and not <laughs> but it was just something quick i just wanted to kind of touch on because it reminded me of new technology and whether at some point it will be innovated or some or it's just i mean it's just something that just does not you know translate well to that medium. Well, i mean i think that like you kind of got us by surprise and i would think we need more like to do more research into it and maybe like think about ways we would do it and we come back to this like uh it's actually something that i, I need to look into uh i had a, I for my motorcycle i hadn't thought about it actually but yeah, so back to BR, uh, the, the question you posed is like, uh, would they fund this if people had no interest in it yet, right? Or like if it looked like people were, had no interest? I mean, yeah, because I mean, there's a market. I mean, the market's got to get met, right? I mean, so the way I see it is that I, I think, uh, I don't know how you perceive it. I think that the main public kind of sees as BR as like something that's not really happening, but it, it does get sales, dude. <laughs> It's like it does get sales. It does have a market out there. It does have interest. That's why they're actually trying to push the bar, and that's why I I feel like they made Half Life Alex because they want to like bring more people's interest to it. And like, when... I guess the market the market towards more not casual gamers, more uh, everyone people right who actually game. Oh well, the market's there for people that game. It's just that they need to um they need to make a reason for us to come in. You know. Like yep. it's called. Like you, how come you haven't picked up uh, VR? Uh well, for me, it's like like Tori said. I think it's budget wise. Like I, I think you're buying a new peripheral, so it's like, why not just buy an extra monitor and I can play comfortably either way. Uh -huh. you know? Like if it was in the price range of like, oh, it's just like 150 bucks. I'll just like, and it's like really good, you know. Like fuck it, I'll buy it, or like maybe two hundred. But it's like, let's say you had it, you think you'd actually like use it? Uh, I mean, it's free. 
Uh, you had it. I mean, if I had it, and like, I just feel like the only game I would probably play is uh, Half Life. Uh-huh. Uh huh. That's the only game we know about, though. No, but I, I've actually looked into it. Uh, there's one that um, uh, my friend was playing with, like I think it was the creator of Rick and Morty. Oh yeah, uh, I've, seen that. I've seen a couple of games oh, on there, like yeah, Super Hot. It starts like in an office, right? Yeah, and yeah, yeah. It's actually kind of fun. Yeah, they have like they have games. Like I'm saying, it has a market. It's just that, like for me personally, there hasn't been like, all right, maybe Half Life, but like I said, I don't have the pocket for it right now. But um, I think that like if they do something where you can play it and it just feels comfortable and like you know. It's a good experience. Like, I don't know if we're there yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, for me personally, like, like as you said, you would want to think about it as uh, the ultimate uh, goal is for it to basically be Ready Player One, right? Oh, yeah, that's that's the goal, right? <laughs> yeah, and so that's kind of like where I stand, where it's like, if I want to play a game uh, and this is the way you guys are wanting me, like, want your game to be told, then it's like, you have to make your game for it to be told this way. You know, it shouldn't be like a gimmick. Uh, you shouldn't be trying to like capitalize on the gimmick. It should be like dedicate your time to make it so that this is the best way to experience your game. Uh huh. And that was kind of my problem with like the Wii when, like, yeah, it's fun, but like, like, fuck, dude, I didn't want to fucking use that controller to play a game like, let's say, Mario Sunshine, right? Yeah. Like, like I didn't like, like, that was a very awkward controller to use. That and I, I didn't feel like, like it's fun to use for like the games that they had, you know, whether it was tennis, bowling, boxing, whatever. But when it came down to like a game like, hey, I just want to sit down, have a controller, and play. And at some point, we we had that option, but at first we didn't. And they're just saying, oh, because we want to make you, we want to, we want you to play the games how we want it. But it's like, hey, like we're the ones that are, we're the customers, right? We're the ones that are buying. Like, shouldn't we have an option to like want to play a game how we want to as well? Yeah. Because it's like if you're gonna make a game and like design weird peripherals for it, then it's like you gotta sell it to us. You you can't just expect you to like give us some random shit and be like, here, figure it out. <laughs> be like, okay, how the how, why is this the way we should play your game? Like, um, I read an article where they were talking about how, and I probably have to look it up and source it here, but um, I read an article where they were talking about how. Uh, the dude from um, Valve was talking about how, like, oh, yeah, like, you know, modders and hackers will probably end up, like, modding the game so you can play it without VR. Yep, they know. Yeah, and he was like, but it's, um, but, like, the way that you should play it is with VR because that's the experience yeah. we built it for. And it's like, if you're that confident, then, yeah, that's what I want. Like, that's when I want, like, that's when I think the market is, like, good for you to jump in. Like, I don't specifically mean right now. It's just where more people are saying that about their games, you know? Like, right now, we have one, like, one guy saying it. I want, like, the whole industry saying, like, oh, like, we designed this game specifically for you to play it in VR, and we think you're going to fucking have a blast. And when I start seeing that, like, more with, like, like, great stories, then, like, I'll jump in the VR. But as of right now, I can, like, just kind of wait on it, you know, like, stay in, I want to stay in the loop about it, I'm interested, but I don't think I'm going to jump in the market yet. Just hoping there's at least three more Half-Life Alexes coming out in the next three or four years. <laughs> uh-huh. Like, what about you, Tori? If you had the option to... Oh, man, I saw what, that, the Half-Life Alex was the tip, this is the... This is the saving grace, right? This is the defining game. We'll, we'll come back and look at this as, like, the Final Fantasy VII or the Metal Gear of uh, VR gaming. Um, I'm definitely sold. Um, the only thing is, like you know, Juan said, the investment. And because the, clearly, there's not, there's is no other game on the level of Half Life Alex. Nothing from a technology standpoint, from a visual standpoint, nothing is there. There's some fun games there, but nothing that has your interest for hours upon hours, like Half Life Alex does with like a narrative and stuff. Oh, so, so I, I'm definitely sold on it. What was that? I would want to say that it's basically like kind of like saying it's all fluff and no stuff, you know? Yeah, there's a lot of fluff and that stuff, yeah. Um, yeah, it does feel like VR is still stuck in that whole like carnival ride kind of thing, you know? 
Mm-hmm. So like, uh, yeah, yeah. Still, again, I think as the, as the technology gets affordable and the market grows, there's definitely going to be a big giant pocket of money for a developer to spend. You know, three years making a really good game. Like right now, there's not a whole lot of developers that want to pay. You know, two hundred people plus to, to you know three four years to build a VR game, but it's coming. It's coming. I think this game is the one that gets people thinking. If anything, they like said they're they're, they're going to be looking to sell their engine, so people are going to be able to use those developers. Um, but dude, just just the potential. Of, like it'll never. The thing is, VR will never be. I don't think VR will ever be anyone's main source of gaming. There's too many health implications, right? Like you can't you can't really just be really kind of like sometimes you can't really be chilling in your couch or, get, or chilling in your um chair because you have to move around. Um, you can't do it for too many hours. Like if you have a really good VR headset, maybe like four hours at the most. Um, it, it always would be like a sort of, like Juan said, like a peripheral, right? So, but as long as it becomes more affordable, we get better games. Like just God, the the potential, man. You're you're in the game. You're in the game. I like, think that like for me, yeah. The next way we can go is like sort of online when you can just plug in, <laughs> like the Matrix, oh, <laughs> like, no, like no, that's no. dangerous. I don't want to die in that game. No, that that man, that anime was such a disappointment, man. The first episode was so lit, and then it yeah, it slowly know. spiraled downward. Yeah, I'm like, it's the show I'm grinding, like show them after leveling up and shit. So, anyways, uh, I can talk all shit, shit about the game all day. Yeah, uh, anime so all day. one one random thing. Well, yeah, I could I could, I should talk that anime too, bro. I, I'm a, I'm highly disappointed in like the way they yeah. the direction they took that. Yeah. Anyways, I, I don't. We're getting dragged into it. My bad. That's uh, another. That's a topic for, for another. That's another thing. Real, man. Yeah, anime. Show that anime. Show that anime all day. Fuck it. Uh, we can do that some other time. Uh, <laughs> uh, we'll have a video based on just anime that everyone liked, but we personally fucking hate it. <laughs> God damn, we gonna piss people off. Nah. Um, Fuck them. Who cares? <laughs> so. So any more? Any any more at the VR? For VR, I think we're done with that. Uh, I mean, we'll probably come back to it eventually. I so think, far, I think we're all kind of level not there yet. Well, for us personally, I think for some people, it's there. It's dumb fun, you know. I think this is it's, what it's like a fun party. It's like a fun party game, but like it's not for the hardcore gamers that are gonna sit down and like have a binge of just like gaming for hours, you know. I guess one last thing, like, I mean, like, if VR gets there, I mean, think of what if VR, like, the capabilities of VR in multiplayer. Mm, that, we're, not there. There. <laughs> we're not there. If that means you're saying if, if it gets there. I, I just, know. honestly, for me personally, I don't give a fuck about multiplayer. I'm just waiting for single. Like, can I be entertained in this game by myself? Right. Because it's like, that's kind of like why I mainly buy games, because it's like... It's- Okay, sorry, I disconnected. But yeah, it's like, like I said, man, I, I want a game that focuses on telling us a story. Like that's for that's the selling point for me. Uh, I don't know how everyone feels. Like I, you guys play, you probably play more multiplayer than I do. A little bit of both. Like there's games where like I really like the story, and there's games where not multiplayer, but at least co-op. Like hey, let's play a game where we can just fucking chill and just co-op. You know, just like. Yeah, I mean, but like, you know, just chill and just play. That's another Uh, thing we could talk about, like co op. Um, I don't know, man. I think there's some games where I played co op where it was like it got it right, and then when I'm playing other games, I'm so disappointed. Like, what was that? Army of Two? Army of Two. Uh, I fucking love them. Uh, I remember playing it with my cousin, and dude, it was just so fun. Or like, even going back to the PlayStation 2, uh, The Lord of the Rings. Um, those were fun. I actually remember playing that one. Yeah, those were fun. Uh, like you could team up with like your friend or something and just play on the couch, and that's like I think that's something I miss, man. Just like couch playing co-op games. Uh, for me, it was uh, Marvel Alliance. I fucking love playing that game. Like <laughs> just just with friends. It was just it's a pretty like easy game to play, but I mean it was fun. Yeah, I remember that. Uh, I think like couch games that I used to love, like not co-op, but like the old school Mario's when you were like kind of like trying to take over the map I mean you can uh-huh. still kind of do it nowadays but like my favorite one was always uh Super Mario World 3 where like he had the raccoon tail uh-huh. 
Yeah. Wait, Tori. What was that? What was, what was one of those games or just it got co op right for you? Well, you know, I'm not a huge uh past age like thirteen, I would it wasn't a huge co op guy, but I think for me let me think about that. What was a big co op game? Halo was pretty fun. Halo one was fun as hell, co op playing at a friend's house. That was sick to have to like I think the first time I got into Warthog and my friend was like, Hey, get in the back. I'm like, What do you mean? Like you're getting the back of the Warthog, like, Oh, so you driving and I'm like <laughs> controlling the gun, like what? And we're actually like I'm like and he goes, Hey, he goes, Hey, look look up, look up. You see this? You see that ring? It's a whole world. I'm like, what the hell? How does it like how does it not like crash down or like how are you like here? Uh yeah, that that was the that that was a fun ass co op game. Halo. Yeah, Halo was definitely fun for sure. What else? Uh it, it's hard man thinking back on all those like games. Or just even like arcade beat 'em ups, dude. Like those were just oh, those fun. Were just, get, fun. just get high, get drink, just drink a little bit, have fun with your friends and just fucking play like street rage or whatever whatever was. Oh uh, Metal Slug. <laughs> Street rage, drunk, slug, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, when I would recommend this Metal Slug if you ever get to play those. Oh, Metal Slug, dude. Fuck. Yeah, everybody knows. Dude, well, next next time let's play Metal Slug. Play. Bro, I have that shit on my PS3. I'm which one? Three or I got, which I got one? the collection, bro. The whole you got the collection? Shit. Yeah, I yeah. never passed I never played past four. Me and Monkey, like we're doing a power through of just trying to play them off from the start of it and we got like halfway done, bro. We haven't finished. Oh, but like we were trying to do them all in one sit down and it was like we almost did, but like we started late. That's the thing that like screwed us over. Think about that game, it was like, dude, you you need infinite lives. Man. You have infinite lives. <laughs> <You know? laughs> <laughs> that's why it's just like you just kind of like powering through and just try not to die that many there's times there's no fucking way any i mean i'm sure there it's been done but fuck this is tough <laughs> dude you know how you became a man you fucking got to the hitler level with the um with the mothership coming down is this three that's like yeah i think it, well i think it's in all of them mainly it just show up at the end of it all of them uh-huh and it's just it's like creepy. Some of their designs are creepy too. Oh, dude, yeah, it gets dark. Um, but yeah, I can recommend Metal Slug for any like if you're high or just chilling. Uh, yeah. What else I can recommend? Co op. Fuck, we should we should do that next time. We should uh just play Metal Slug and just like record it. Yeah, I got uh I can recommend Raymond. Fun too. Like games like that, you know, where like for me, like I like playing games like that too. Sometimes I don't want to play a single player game where it's like a story. It's like I just want to fucking have fun and just hang out and just do that. I think, uh, I think co op too. Like, it, imagine Red Dead, but it were like where you play as John Marston or something, you know, like instead of doing this online, it's actually like you're part of the story, it's someone else's story, you know. Uh huh. Yeah, and I think me and you were talking about like how, like how cool would it be when if Devil May Cry actually did that? You know, you can Virgil. you can be playing Dante, I can be Virgil, or someone Nero. can be Nero, and just team combos. I mean, that would be cool. But I mean, I'm pretty sure it's there's a lot of work to be like you know, to be done. But I mean, you can I could you can you can dream. Well, it was a rumor for um. For Devil May Cry 5 that they were working on, like, doing it for Bloody Palace. So you could co-op Bloody Palace. Uh-huh. And it's just, like, maybe there's something to the rumor. You know, take it with a pinch of salt. Uh, But if it's, like, it turns out to be real, then I think that we got something. Like, the RE engine is really great. I think that, um, I think we're in a place where what we need is co-op. Um... Tori, yeah, or you guys ever played um this is the last co op game I played that actually had a story. Uh Cannon Lynch. Oh, Cannon Lynch was dope. I played number three, yeah. Uh I think that number three or two. Yeah. Uh Gears had co op. Oh yeah. Gears. Oh yeah, I played a lot of Gears co op. I think uh yeah, Gears had a great co op, Gears one at least. Yeah, so um there's also what was that? Game. We play that castle game, uh, like night night castle game. What is it? The little night the night people. The night people. Oh, what? the shovel knight. Yeah, no, that's shovel knight. Uh, hold on, look at that. 
Play one. I bet him in a little bit. Night. Which one? It's cartoon of the game. It's kind of like Fight Princess. Hold on. Fight Princess was dope. It's kind of like just a dumb pleasure game where you're just like feeding a princess to make her fat so that like your opponent can't steal her. Uh, there was this one game um, me and Julio played. It was uh, Tower Fall, I think. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, Tower Fall. Pretty good. It's, it's simple, but it was pretty fun, and it gets kind of it can get kind of difficult, but it's. Well, I think it's, cool. it's... it's fun. Well, I think it's like what you need nowadays is like those games you can just take a break from and like, you know, it's not stressful. Like, yeah, because like you jump in the Call of Duty and you can go from like fucking owning everything because it's like you just keep moving and everything's just working out to like every single person is just in a corner. Like, yeah, it, it, you definitely have to like change up your style a little bit more. And I mean, even then you can like you can, me, I'm a player like I always checks corners, but even then. You can't check every corner, and you get you end up you end up getting fucking killed by some guy who's just standing there with a shotgun or something. And I mean, I just can't think really that do much about it. I just think it's like uh, you go from like everything's cool to like you almost want to throw the controller. Like you know, it's fucking. Uh, it, it, you can never have it like all perfect. It's always like it's either gonna be you start out good and then suck, or you start out bad and you pick it up. It, it's like the consistency is weird. I've had games where, like, I've gone, like, when we played Surge last time, and I was, like, 20 and something, and then, like, my next one, like, I started playing later on, and it was just, like, it dropped, it, I started doing horrible. Yeah, a lot of a lot of players have played so differently, and you can't, there's, like, you can't have one style where you, that fits every game, play, like, every, every opponent, it just consistently changes, and it's, it's, it's annoying. Especially like in that's not even considering like connection issues or uh when the game is like glitching out on you or lagging out on you. That's the most frustrating. Yeah, I mean Yeah, we got an echo on you, bro. Oh okay. hear me? We can hear you. For me? No, am I echo? You it just echoes on ET. Okay. So the game I'm just talking about is called Castle Crashers. Okay, so explain us the okay. basis of Castle Crashers. All right, man. It's just like a cartoony, like you play these like cartoony ass, goofy ass knights. Uh, it's kind of like a kind of RPG ish that you level up. Um, but the cool thing is you're trying to, uh, you're trying to save these princesses. Like I think like eight of them or something, to be kidnapped. And so in co-op, right? Um, whoever like defeats the boss gets the princess and like you like make like you like make out with her and stuff like you get it. yeah and so i'll play with my friend at the time and um he was a couple of levels higher than me so he would like he'd be hit up both like i do all the work and he'd come in and kill the boss and then get the princess right and then finally the last princess i got her she was mine i'm like y'all got the last one you know she's finna be thick right you can see she was thick and then she took her uh little uh drape off she was butt ass ugly <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Oh, doing hella dirty, I, I, I got roasted bad right, how, that. how's my mic now <laughs> testing it's better okay I man okay well, there's this one game dude when i it wasn't for kids but i used to play it as a kid it was um it was called Leisure Suit Larry. I don't know if you guys ever heard of that. Oh, that's, oh yeah, uh, that's, that's a dirty, dirty game. game. <laughs> that's a dirty, that's a dirty game. game. How did you even get that game, bro? How did you get uh, that? I didn't... So back then, my uncle he used to have a uh, Xbox and he he modded oh. it. So he used to have just a bunch of games and um, you just it was just all in there. Like in and then that's not even counting like the different emulator games he had too. Um, and I think he had that game. He didn't have it for too long. I think he realized, oh shit, these guys shouldn't be playing these games. <laughs> <But>, uh, <laughs> they walked in uh, on ET, bro, just breathing heavily. Yeah, man. Um, but I'm not ashamed. <laughs> I was, uh, oh, I, I, I enjoyed it. <laughs> Damn, bro. Oh yeah, he did. <laughs> I wish I finished it though. That's what she said. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, dude. Um, I mean, I, I think co-op. But uh, there's certain people that should focus on that. I mean, like, I, I think another pitch is, like, if you're going to make us play, like, a oh, dude, one thing that actually reminded me. 
I was gonna say something, but um, so Assassin's Creed, man, I fucking miss the old school like Brotherhood multiplayer. Uh, yeah, that yeah, was I fun. To play it a lot. Yeah, that used to be fun, dude. They killed it. It slowly died. Like they started releasing all this random shit that was like kind of broke the game. Uh, and it made it kind of like you could still have some decent games, but people started leaving, and it just like became unpopulated. Uh, uh-huh. if they've made a game where they focused on it and like made it really just a great focus of the game, you know, like it could be its own thing. Have it be free, like have it be battle royale, you know. Have it be your own thing. But like, uh, I think for what they were doing at the time, uh, maybe they were either ahead of the time or they were just not appealing to the right people. And then, like, as, like, the games came out, it just, like, they made the story shorter because of the online, and you kind of didn't even really want to play online anymore because it was kind of, like, half-assed. Like, dude, think about the order. I mean... I fucking know. Don't do that. Don't do that to us. Don't do that to us. Wouldn't it have been cool for co-op, though, man? Just, fuck, just... No, man, fuck. Like, hold on. Let me cut you off. You know why I hate that fucking game? Short and sweet. Bro. I hate it. Because they basically just gave us a prologue, bro. They're like, there's this game with vampires, werewolves, and who knows what other fucking monsters are out there. And you're not going to fucking fight any of them. Like, you only fight two werewolves. Yeah. And, and like, you don't even really fight the, the vampires. You just burn the fucking coffins. It's like... And you fun sequence everything. Yeah. Burn no co- what? You don't, there's only one there's, vampire in the there, game. No, there's vampires in the crates, and you like, burn them. Unconscious. No, only so one, man. they have shipments of vampires in the warehouses. That's what, like, they show you that, like, changes your... Oh, that thing. Yeah, and you don't even fight them. You just burn their bodies. Yeah, but I even know... But the vampires, though, to be fair, they never had that vampires in the marketing. It just was the werewolves. No, but so, like... I wish you could fight them more often. Yeah, and but when you were finding them, it was quick time events and just like they re- they just ran straight to you. They didn't like oh, move around the environment. Yeah, I wish that was disappointing me. Definitely, the gameplay, you know, yeah, the gameplay definitely wasn't the best. I love, I, the shooting mechanics was solid. I like the mechanics. I, just, are there. I think it's missing the bread <laughs> butter. It's missing like typical ass. Like usually games have like okay, there's a, there's a small enemy and a heavy enemy and like a quick enemy. They're missing like enemy types. Like cause they had the weapons there. Um. Whoa, potential for sure. It definitely had potential to to do a lot more. Oh yeah, but the visuals, man. I've been playing that. Right, so right, right, looking right. Lamps. <laughs> the visuals, are, it, it might be even, it might be still the best looking PS4 game. It may be, it might be. It's, yeah, God, I was, they they went for more. Uh, you know, I mean, let's talk about the films. Kind of like the Man from Uncle. They went from a uh, style over substance. Uh, what would you? What was that? Damn it, he. They went for style over substance. Uh huh. And that's in... the visuals. Uh huh. Visuals yeah. over gameplay, I would say. I mean, the mechanics were um, there. just needed. Yeah. yeah. Why you do this? But you gotta know the history of that studio. They're, they come from like, they were either like helping other developers or they were making PSP games. So to go from like God of War PSP to that was, was huge for them. And considering they were, you know, a newer studio to make that, that they deserve a sequel. There's hoping, there's rumors. That they may make a sequel, but it might down. be uh, or like they, I thought what? they got the studio got shut. No, nah, what happened was, I mean, flat out, Sony stopped funding them, so they had to, you know, of course, they have enough money, so they just, you know, um, fire a bunch of people, but and they made like a stupid ass GameStop game, the form was uh-huh. or whatever. Um, and they were helping, even helping like other teams with, um, you know, uh, coding and bug testing but they actually are working on a triple a game right now so it, there's some rumors floating around that it's a sequel and i think now knowing their mistakes sort of like the first uncharted right they deserve a second game and they deserve to go crack out it. they know what they messed up on they deserve to go at it again so i think that uh i was i was actually pondering this the other day um i was playing well, no, I was watching some gameplay about uh, Jedi Fallen Order, and I was thinking, well, ET needs to get around pl- to playing it, and oh, he hasn't played it. Nah. And yeah. so, like, my thing is that like the combat in it is solid, right? Like, it starts off clunky because it's like it kind of like yeah. represents uh, ET. We're really echoing, man. <laughs> 
Yeah. yeah so what I noticed about the combat is that we started off with, you know, like it's kind of clunky at first, and I don't know if it was just me, but it like some of the, like I I feel like I was really good about it, but I feel like the combat was a little bit kind of like you had to adjust to it, even though it kind of has the same. Yeah, learning curve. It's a learning yeah, curve. Yeah, and it's like, but it's almost it's pretty much the same combat system as like God of War or like Dark Souls, so it's like you would think that it's familiar, but it's like it kind of like I, I don't know. I feel like you kind of just got better at the more you played it because like Cal is learning too, yeah. you know, like he's relearning all this shit. So you kind of like doing it with him too. And the more that he learns, the better your, your skills are, you know, because now you have upgrades. Now you can like chain these combos differently. Uh, Like, I don't know if that's just me overthinking or if that's like deliberate. <laughs> like, what about you? Uh, Tori, what are you playing right now? I'm not playing uh, a little Half-Life 2, The Order, Dishonored 2, just patiently waiting for God of uh, Last sorry, God of War. Waiting for um, Final Fantasy. You know, Last of Us, of course. I'm Final Fantasy 7 and contemplating in Resident Evil. I just don't want to spend money on it. <laughs> you don't want to spend money on it, but you want to get it. Yeah. Sounds about right. Chip was as short as Resident Evil 2, like, because I didn't care to play for that, play with the other chip, because as soon as I started it, I was like, oh, it's the same exact thing, it's in, in the same police building, like, I don't want to do that. I just, I, like, I did it just to do it, and, like, I, I just can't play it again. Like, one time, what, uh, me too, I, I yeah, like, like once I finish it once, I'm like, I don't really see the incentive to do it again, and, like, especially when you do it, like, once with uh, Leon, and then once with uh, Joe. So hopefully, um, hopefully, once the reviews come out, um, ooh. what did Joe or Claire? Uh, Claire. Claire's in Resident Evil 2, Joe's in right. 3. So once the reviews come out, obviously, how long the game is, then I'll make my decision. Yeah. Cause I mean, it was like only like <sighs> maximum like eight hours, right? Uh, I don't I, know. Hopefully, or the last one was, yeah. Hopefully this one's at least twenty hours. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, man. I think I'm waiting for God of War. Team, uh, I didn't I mean, know what's next. Yeah. The Last of Us. La I mean, Last of Us, yeah, but God of War, man. Like, we gotta fight that. That's at least Thor, three years bro. away. Damn, man. Did that, that? Oh, oh, fuck. I, 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 <laughs> so I played it. Damn, that's so. What the hell? He hasn't, bro. But at this Why point, it's on him. Can't we? Uh, can't we, uh, wait, uh, Juan, do you own nah, God man, of War? Nah, man, we've been Disney? through this, uh, Julio does, though. Julio, uh, like, can't you let the players, like, borrow games on PS4? Yeah, it's the hard copy. Oh, shit, well then, um, do that it's, shit, bro, like, Ernesto, it, bro. I know, like, it's, it's, it's a bit, it's one thing that for Ernesto to recommend me a movie, because it only takes, like, two hours to watch, right? A game is like <laughs> hours upon hours. That's about how I have to ask of somebody. But God of War, man, like, uh, put stop the presses. Like you know what, man? I don't want oh, you to man. talk to me until you finish God of War. Yeah, it's gonna be hard because Last of Us is coming out. Like, if you if Last of Us comes out and you ain't played about it, it's like uh, if you go to the next month, it's like you're not gonna be able to play this game until like August. Yeah, put down. Gosh, I can play God of War, maybe. That's like, fuck. I don't know. I have other things I want to do, and um, that's just going to take time. Yeah, I think, from a narrative perspective, there's a lot to learn from God of War. Yeah, there's a, lot, there's a lot of different things, too. I mean, I mean, yeah, it, looks, it definitely looks really good, and I mean, I'd want to play, I'd like to play it. It was two years ago the game came out, almost two years. Yeah, I want yeah, to finish it. Two years ago. I don't want to let it pile. I don't want to be arching. Pile. What? No. Me? Okay. No, I'm. No, I'm saying I just want to uh finish. Like, I don't want to add on to my list. I just want to actually, I actually want to finish some of these things. Yeah, and it's uh, yeah, you should get to it. Got away the when I can, yeah. Fucking watch the game, yeah. bro. If you can't fucking play, I, I, I was, but then Tori was like, "Oh, he's, oh my." He's missing, mean, he out, missing out, man. That game bro, is but, like, so. We cannot talk about it just because he hasn't 
I know. I don't know how we'll talk about games and can't pick up God of War. It's yeah, hard, but like you don't want to focus or go then just then just have your guys own like uh, God of War like video. Let's, yeah, man. let's do that. I mean, we will. It's just that like yeah, we're talking yeah. about things that are relevant to it, you know. I mean, like, you can talk about it without spoiling too much, or I don't even care. We guys do spoilers. Just talk about it. Yeah, uh, but like, no, why would no, we as human no, beings no, deprive no. you of experiencing that for the first time? Yeah, like, could you imagine if we just spoiled the last little part two for you right now? Um, I mean, I'll, I'm still gonna play it regardlessly. No, but could you imagine? Like, uh, it's like asking us to sleep with your girlfriend before you sleep with her. You know, like, what's the point? I I don't know. I don't think that's <laughs> quite the analogy. <laughs> it's, <laughs> <rent. laughs> it's a little too. <laughs> it's how serious yeah, I am. Yeah, like you messed with at your house. <laughs> It's like, like we ruined the enjoyment, bro. Why, why would we do that to you? Uh, I, you're not, you're not gonna ruin it for me. Trust me, dude. It's like just experience it for the first time by yourself. All right, I'll, I'll get, like I said, I'll get to it, but not anytime soon. Fuck, man, it's already April. Dude, this year's fucking flying by, and nothing's going on. Yeah, dude, all my plans have been halted completely.